Our contract with this backwater place is just about to come to an end. And, well, thank God. I don't mind a tropical vacation every once in a while, but it's not very glamorous, considering we're here to work. Anyway, one last thing before the defense minister releases our contract, and we move on to bigger and better. Hitman team, you haven't gotten all that much airtime this deployment, so you're taking point with this operation. We have confirmed the location of the Burlock Privateer headquarters off the coast on the southwestern edge of the Jesta Island chain. They're a mercenary group like us who unfortunately have turned to outright piracy. According to surveillance data, we have determined that they are the culprit of the recent high-profile hijacking of the Federation-registered cargo ship May Lynx. The May Lynx is supposedly carrying volatile cargo belonging to the Federation's Department of Global Energy and Sustainability Office. Nothing specific from the Federation contact about the cargo, however, our orders are to retrieve it if possible, or to neutralize it if we can't. Attempts to negotiate for it have turned up with nothing, so we're going in. Hitman team, you are to approach the island from the south along with support and establish control over the area. Your objective is to eliminate any surrounding anti-air and resistance on the island. After that, secure an LZ for our operator group Ronin to ascertain the cargo. Once Ronin lands, maintain air superiority until the next stage of the operation is determined. Be aware that the Burlocks have other Merc pilots on tap, so enemy reinforcements could be a factor. Normally, we'd stay out of contact with any Federation-adjacent taskings. But this is the last thing we need to do for our current contract, so I'll let it slide. Two birds with one stone. Easy enough, right? Now get to work. Dismissed. Hello everybody, this is Project Wingman, the first mission. I played this for a little bit earlier today, it came out today, uh, December 1st, 2020. Um, it is an Ace Combat-like game, uh, almost identical with how the mission layout was, the briefing. Uh, even going into the hangar, as we will see right now. As you can see, you initially only start out with the T-21 or the T-2I, I guess. Uh, the TF-4 and the MG-21. The T-2 is the MiG-21 equivalent as well as the MG-21. And the TF-4 is the F4. Uh, the SV-37 is a Vigan. You actually unlock this, uh, I believe, after the first mission. And then the TE-4, which is just essentially another <laughs> F4. Uh, you unlock this in the second mission. Um, I thought starting a new campaign they would have taken that out, but I guess not. Uh, I retained some of the uh, some of the money that I earned from playing the first two missions. Purchased for forty three hundred dollars, but since it's the first mission, I'm gonna go with the TF four. Um, again, this is just like Ace Combat, you have the stats on the planes, I believe the F4 has unguided bombs, but when I was playing it, it they didn't give me the option to unleash, to release the unguided bombs, so, I don't know, uh, it doesn't have a good tutorial for the game, um, it basically pushes you right into the action uh, without actually teaching you like what all the buttons do. Uh, I'm currently using the Xbox, one of the Xbox remotes. Um, 
so let's go. Uh, again, antique ground that gives only the unguided bomb large. And apparently I only have eight because I'm a trainer aircraft. And I have only flares, no other color schemes. Let's launch. Aesthetically, this game is beautiful. Um, the last Ace Combat that I played was... I forget what it's called, but it's actually s storied into the real world where you get to fly around in Miami and whatnot. This is the ever lovely airborne warning and control systems aircraft Galaxy. Hitman hey, team, get on the clock. Hitman hey, 3, comic punching in. Hitman hey, 2, copy you clear, Galaxy. You gotta let us loose. Just about, diplomat. Hitman hey, 1, take your flight on this vector till you start to see targets on the IFF. You are free to engage. Alright, so they're going to be talking, um, so pressing A is the gun, pressing B is my missiles, uh, I forget what pressing Y was, pressing X expands my radar, uh, oh, Y is to change targets, left bumper is my decrease speed, right bumper is Increase speed right above where you see STDM, you'll see two white bars. Those are actually missile indicators, uh, and the triggers on my yaw control. And left thumbstick is to fly, right thumbstick is to observe. So as I move closer in towards this target, missile shot off. As you can see, it's like Ace Combat where it shows me if I hit the target or not. And on the radar, it gives me basic air to ground or air targets or ground targets. Uh, aesthetically, it puts you right into the cockpit. It looks pretty nice. I forget how an F4 looks, but this is not what an F4 looks. Uh, an F4 never had a little screen like that, at least not the pilot. I like to fly usually at 500 knots. 500 knots, that's... that is fast. Alright, so the AI sucks. The last time I played this, I essentially got all the kills. The AI basically did nothing. And you can get a lock on even though you're not on the HUD. Uh, Alright. And then as you come closer towards the target, get to uh, your gun reticle comes up these standard missiles I believe the maximum engagement range is 9,000 meters or 9,000 feet I, I forget what the uh, it doesn't actually show me what the distances except for a number. Oh an AI actually killed that. Stacked up. Stack 
So, when you die in this mish in this game, you actually don't start from a checkpoint. Uh, you start from the very beginning. So, careful how you play this game, especially not crashing, because a 10-minute mission will turn into a 20 to 30 minute mission if you crash occasionally. I've learned that the hard part. Uh, if I had my track IR, I don't know if this game is, supports track IR, but... Oh, I miss. It's so just like Ace Combat, it shows you whether you hit, destroy, or miss. And if you hold down the missile button as you fire it, uh, it gives you a tracking video just like that. I think all the air to air targets are down. I'll go for these guys. Uh, if you press in the left thumbstick, it flares. I'm not really deploying flares too much right now because there's really no air threats. I don't even know if that'll hit. Nope, I missed. Let's go for a dive bomb. Again, I haven't played the recent Ace Combat, I believe that's seven. Uh, but I would expect the graphics to be just as good as this. Got some air to air threats coming off in the distance.
another thing, if you press the uh, right thumbstick, it puts you into different modes. And you can see my afterburner is going in. And it actually shows you like how much missiles you have. Uh, in this view, I don't actually know how much. Oh, is that it? 138 right next to STDM. I don't even know. I'm actually supposed to destroy this target. I missed. Normally, if I know I miss the ground target, I usually go high up in the air, turn. Time it, I completed the mission, but because it was so dark, I crashed into the water and had to restart this mission. I don't know why my wingmen have better planes than me. The money came through from this contract, and our opportunities in this region have just about dried up. If no one objects, and your contract with Zakario is still in effect, pack your bags. I looked a little into the Cascadian situation, and I believe we'll make a little something of ourselves there. All right, so I destroyed most of the targets and my allies destroyed a buoy four PT boats and three anti-aircraft artillery pieces good lord so that completes mission one of project wingman uh, again it Normally, like Ace Combat, the first mission is like that tutorial mission, even though this was kind of like a tutorial mission, it doesn't actually lay out like what buttons do what stuff on the controller, so you actually have to go into the controller module and look at it or just do what I did and um, die a few times and to find out what is what.